Hello everyone. What is it? It is September 5th. Running a little bit behind, 10.30 in the morning. You guys are probably going, what do you mean running behind? As you can see, my car's loaded. What is happening? What's happening? Making some big life-changing decisions. I am moving. I know it's kind of sound kind of like it has. There was some stuff that's been into the works for the last few years. It was kind of like you know, what am I gonna do? Where am I gonna go? Oh, I'm not gonna miss that traffic anymore. Um, September long weekend. Everybody's trying to get out. Wow. Um, COVID has presented some really big challenges, as everybody is aware. Everybody's been struggling. Now, March of last year, I had transferred over to another department with the bus system. And it was for a full time, you know, driving the access handy bus. <coughs> and I'm like going, good, okay. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be 40 hours. And, and the pay was really good. And you get benefits. And I'm like going, okay, sweet. But you don't. But of course, vacation was paid during at, you know, every check. So it wasn't like it was bank. So you didn't really get vacation time you know, pay, so you had to do it all yourself. And, uh... <sighs> Sorry, just got a lot of things going through. Um, wasn't actually getting the full 40 hours. You know, but you're from the Yukon? What the hell? Sneaking all through, are you? <coughs> um. See, I just lost my train of thought because of that. Way to go, dummy. I wasn't getting the full hours, you know, but I was getting like about 72. So it was like 32 one week and, four, you know, 40 the other, which was like going, oh, okay. I would have preferred, you know, the full 40. You know, but it was more closer to I was getting like the 72 and then things started going even down and it's like going wait a second here like what are we I thought we're full time we're supposed to be guaranteed the 40 hours this is what we we're all told oh no 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 I mean, it's just going to be the 32 I'm like going I can't survive on the 64 and then it got even worse last year um you know, the hours started getting even worse. And then around Christmas time, it's really weird because in the summertime, it's, that's one of their slow times. And then Christmas, December and, and the beginning of the January is also their slow times. Last year, it slowed down so much that... Some of us didn't even work for a week. And it was unprecedented. They'd never seen it slow down and do anything like that before. Not, and it was like going, okay, that's kind of interesting. So, and there wasn't really the talks and the stuff of COVID or anything out here yet. <coughs> so it was like going, they're all hoping that, you know what, come January it picks up like it's supposed to. 
there was a lot of colds and stuff going around. January came around and it still didn't really pick up. It was to the point where some people were like off like eight days in a row and it's like going, guys, we have a problem here. And then, you know, things picked up a little bit so they were getting, so they kind of rotated trying to get people some work. But it wasn't much for hours. And then COVID started to hit. And things just kind of got worse. Right? The first case in Canada was in January. I wouldn't really have known that because it wasn't until much later that we started really hearing about it. <coughs> <coughs> I cough more when I talk a lot, so... And it hit so hard that all of a sudden hardly any of us are at work. <clears throat> and then come in March, it's like, sorry guys, we have to lay you all off. March 20th was when the layoff started. Because of COVID, layoff allowances were extended so that companies would not be forced to pay out severance and financially hurt them as much. Unfortunately, COVID did not recover to what all the companies and all the government, everything was hoping for and expecting it to. My end of my layoff was July. The only thing that they were doing was paying and keeping my benefits, which was, you know, somewhat good. You know, but with some other different strict rules. But then when our end of the layoff came, it's like going, we haven't heard anything. Are we going to be let go and paid severance because by then they legally were going to have to pay severance. Then the government started changing some of the rules because they didn't want companies to have to pay severance because it would put some of them financially bound and out of business and they're already struggling. I'm like going, well, so are we. <coughs> And some companies ended up, they, they had no choice. They had to pay severance and let everybody go. But they had to do the payout differently so that they didn't go bankrupt. But that's a whole separate issue. But they decided, well, we're not going to let you guys go. You know, you're going to have to pay anything back. We know that we can't expect you guys to sit around. They'll continue to pay the benefits until a we return to work and then of course it will continue or B if, you know, if we find another job then yeah we just let them know but they'll pay it up until we find some <coughs> well things got difficult and they were like well why don't you some of you guys go back like I hadn't been applying for the last couple of years to find jobs market's been really tough. It was 2016 when the ex and I returned from our last vacation that upon the day of return I was notified the company is closing its doors and we're being let go great way to be funny and come back from vacation and it's like going, yeah, I'm sorry, you don't have a job. <clears throat> Since then, it was almost impossible because things in the industry was already hurting the market and the job market and the economy, right? Because we had the oil and all that stuff. Then, you know, months the year after and it was the 
year after that went through the divorce, having to sell the house and then deal with the death. And 2017 was a very devastating year for me. You know, I decided I gotta, you know, do something, right? You know, got out and start dating and, you know, and found someone, you know, and so, you know, we took the time to do it right and to build a proper relationship. 2018, um, you know, was more panic because it's like going, I don't have money, I'm using up all my... <coughs> RRSPs used up all the money from the insurance and everything for what? You know, I was going to end up out in the street. Got a job doing part time school bus. So, you know, I finally braved one of my biggest fears driving a big vehicle and ended up loving it. But it is part time, which means you're off in the summer, no income coming in, and off Christmas and spring break. So I was still struggling, even with that. And I had a nice, you know, school bus route and great kids. You know, I did a great job, they were all impressed. And even the kids were and the parents because they had trouble, so much troubles in the past that they went through like three, like multiple drivers in the school year. And they were all, you know, like, don't, don't you dare leave. You've been one of the best ones. Unfortunately, I can't survive on that. You know, if school bus was year round full time, let's do it. But it's not. So when a full time position opened up, I had to grab it. You know, yeah, the parents and the kids, they were not very happy. Even the school wasn't happy. They were like, well, what can you, they all do? And I'm like going, look, here's the situation. I need a full-time job. If school bus could have been full-time and, and year-round and stuff, I'd stay. And they were like going, they wish that they could. They are like going... You know, let's start like a GoFundMe or start something there, you know, or try to pull our money. I'm like going, you guys can't keep doing that every month just to try to keep me. And they're like going, yeah, I know. We just don't want you to leave. But that was March of last year. And went over into new department, did all the stuff. And as I said, you know, that was all good. But then the hours and the stuff started going down just the same and it's like <coughs> when March hit this year my mom and sister already got laid off because they were working in the daycare <coughs> then I got laid off <coughs> then later my dad got laid off and then a few months later after their um, layoff was done my dad, who had been working for the company for over 10 years, they decided to let every senior person go, and they only kept a few of the part-timers. Yeah. Um, it's been interesting. So, over three years now, I've been dating long distance. Let me show that that's still recording yet. Yeah. Um, long distance is a challenge. Right? It's not my first long distance. You know, my first long distance actually was one province away. I'm Alberta and he was Saskatchewan. And this one, you know, it's only a three hour drive, you know. He's like 45 minutes from the Saskatchewan border, but he's still in Alberta, so... Why is it all the good ones kind of are all out there and never here? 
over the three years, things have developed very well. Last year, as you've seen from my videos, we went on our first big trip together. And that just really super sealed the deal that, you know what, we're meant to be together, we have to be together. So the plan was, okay, let's move up. So I wanted him to move here to Calgary. You know, he was renting out there and you know what, I had access to a three bedroom place and stuff here that we could have done, but it meant he would have to leave a job <laughs> that he really likes and he's been with for nine years and to start over. And he was on a contract, so he had a guarantee. So that's why it was like, okay, and I had a job here, so it was going to, you know, just wait and I'll apply and for jobs out there. And, you know, it's... I started looking for jobs everywhere, you know, because I had to start even protecting myself here because, you know... And I wasn't getting many calls. Like... It's just really difficult and challenging right now out there for everyone. <coughs> His lease comes up for the place he's renting October next month. So the plan was to try to find a job, you know, and move out to be with him, you know, which was in Medicine Hat. You know, either by the end of this year, or if we had, he had to extend his lease for another six months and do it next year. Okay. This was actually the plan for quite a while, because originally the plan was I had to make it make a decision by March of this year. But because of recent events out of our control that you can't predict, all those plans change, and not necessarily with my end, it was things that changed and affected my sister and my parents. So in the last three years, everybody around has had their life uprooted and changed. Nothing's the same anymore. And it's just been change after change after change and it's you know, it's like, what do I want? What do I want? You know, like, it's taking a long time to figure it out. And it's like, we know what we want. We want to be together. That has been decided and we have reached that point where it's like, no, it's going to happen. So the plan, you know, he had been worried about his parents, right? They're a little bit older than mine even though he's younger than, a few years younger than me, but, you know, so there's a lot of stuff, so he also worries about their health, because he's also dealt with, in the last three years we've been together, a lot of deaths in the family.
it started to affect him there, his work. <laughs> he started to have a lot of the friends and people and stuff around him that he knows move and leave. And I've had the same thing happen in the last two years. Everybody has moved, left, gone, divorced, broke up. <laughs> the only thing that's kept me in Calgary is, you know what, I've been there for 16 years now. lot changed in those 16 years. Um, but I've also seen a lot of people come and go. And pretty much, you know, it, I came here because of jobs. In Canberra, there wasn't much for jobs, and that's why I moved to Calgary for more jobs and opportunity. And I got those jobs and opportunity. It wasn't easy. It was challenging in the beginning, but I did it. And then 2014, after being with one company for 10 years, and then me being let go, right? It's, you really start going, wow. And I just started watching everybody around me leave. And it's like going, everybody kept coming here, but there was as many people leaving Calgary as there were coming in. <laughs> and the last few years I've literally watched all those around me that would say they're never going to leave leave so <clears throat> with COVID I no longer had a job that made it harder for me to leave the only thing I did have was yeah, my parents had helped me get into this one place. Oh, let's see how bad this bump is. It says a bump here. <laughs> oh, not that bad. Okay. Um, what was I saying? I've watched so many people leave and, you know, that said they never would. And literally everybody, you know, that I knew and that was around me was gone. So, you know, I've got my boyfriend, but he doesn't live here. It's long distance. Family members don't really have much for family members. Gained one of the family members back, but don't really talk and see much of him. But he lives 45 minutes from Calgary. My parents, my aunt out in Ontario, you know, my uncle and my other cousin, they could care less about any other part of the family, which is really sad. But because I think of their decisions, karma is really getting back at them. My family is what's kept me in Calgary. We have always been tight knit there for each other. My parents were also one that said, no, they're not going to move. They stayed in Canmore longer than I did by another two years. And then they moved to Cochrane because they're like going, no, we're not ever going to move to Calgary. Life sometimes has different options and choices for us. Now we all live close together in Calgary. That is now until today. Things got really interesting out in the hat where the boyfriend was. So he had been looking for a new job there as well as the odd one in Calgary, but he was also looking up north back home as an option. With his credentials and the stuff that he has, there was lots of options and because the company that he was working for she started to you know be very rude and poor management and it just really developed and got really bad and toxic to where you know he was always tired and he was sick and didn't want to go to 
paperwork and you know it's all the signs of you know what a bad toxic environment people don't leave the job she loves the job people leave bad management a manager can come in and destroy a company and make all the good employees flee and kill them around this one wasn't the new one coming in. It's just that that's how she became in turn. So, <clears throat> lo and behold, he got offered a job back north up home. They were fighting actually over him because he, they all wanted him because he had the credentials and they he had worked there in the past. <coughs> So <clears throat> that created a little bit of tension because now the plans, so I was getting myself ready for moving only three hours away from my family. Now that wasn't going to happen. So then I had started to apply up there and stuff. And the thing is, is I was starting to panic because you know what? In Canada, thank God that Trudeau offered Serb because he did help many people. Was it rushed in and could have been better? Yeah. If Mr. Shear was the one in charge, we all would be dead there would be no help. So, let's not get into politics. You know, there's not a single one of them that don't have some blemishes on their record from past. But, um, Serb was supposed to run out end of June because I was part of the ones that got the retroactive pay to March. The one thing is I was because of CERB and I was able to put some of my car payments and stuff on hold I was able to survive. If not I would have lost everything. I wouldn't have been able to pay rent for the place that my parents had got to help me out from the divorce and they would have gone down too. That didn't happen. They extended to serve. Okay. But then they had screwed up and then I had to go two weeks you know to try to catch a couple a couple weeks without any money coming to catch up and that's really hurt. <coughs> But they extended it to the end of August. Okay. <clears throat> Work was not doing good. The chances of us going back was like almost slim to none. Out of over 50 routes that they used to get a day, or for the week, they only had five to seven. They went. They were from five, and then through the summer it went to seven. It was bad, and unless things, you know, opened and got better, it wasn't going to happen. And I knew that it wasn't. And they're lucky if they're going to call some drivers back October. But then, of course, remember how I mentioned it slows down for the Christmas. So <clears throat> for them, I don't see them any chance unless everything goes back to normal 100% by next year. Then next year I'll have a chance of being called back. Other than that, I'm toast. That's why I had to look for a new career. And wow, everybody likes to speed right now. Of course, it's a long weekend. You know what? I'm sorry, guys. I've got a professional license. I know all the rules and done all the training. 
you guys go ahead, have an accident, die, get points and stuff, I'm going to be safe. Um, so, as I had mentioned, you know, in the past, it was like, why don't you guys go back to drive school bus? So, I went over to try to go back to the part-time school bus to get in. <coughs> went in, they're like going, oh god, yeah, come back, <clears throat> went in, they were going to do um, their training, they did one day training, I'm like going, you're ready to take the test, you, you, you know everything, you follow all the rules, you're good to go, went in, did the test, passed, and they're like going, okay, we'll call you when it's time to go pick a route, originally, because we were the full time, was another one, we were supposed to have a higher priority. That didn't happen. <clears throat> that didn't happen. We all didn't have a higher priority. But at the same time, a lot of routes got cut from the school. Yes, there was a few new ones added. A lot of people ended up not getting a route. A lot of drivers who had a route last year lost it and ended up with nothing. So there's a lot of drivers right now that are panicking. And then I'm hearing now with Edmonton, <clears throat> oh, well, we got a shortage of drivers. It's all bad, blah, 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 blah. People, they're all going to be arriving over half hour late to the school. And it's all because of all this new training that's had to have happened since the Humboldt. And it's four weeks training. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell are you talking about? There is no such thing. I'm in that industry. There is no extra training. It doesn't take four weeks. What are you talking about? I'm like going, there's something wrong in the city of Edmonton. But whatever. If anybody's a school bus driver and you want a job, you know what? There's tons of jobs in Edmonton. I just won't go to Edmonton because I don't like Edmonton and I don't like driving there. It's worse than Calgary and others say the other way and I'm like going, no, 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 no. Calgary is 10 times better than Edmonton. <coughs> but anyways, <coughs> went there, roots disappeared fast. There was only <coughs> three routes left to choose from. And two of them were disgusting. Nobody was going to do them. So I had, you know, I chose the one, you know, and I thought, okay, it should be a good pay for this route, especially with where it was coming from a private school. I'm like, I would have been better off working just for one of the regular school routes than this. It, we were, it's not paying enough. But I needed some money. We were, it was going, it, the school was going to start earlier than the regular Calgary Board's schools. They kind of postponed a little bit, but that's okay. So that's what I was doing this week was driving the school bus. I was given because of all because of all the changes from the homeboat. Now, yes, there is some changes, but there's no extra training. Was I was given actually a brand spanking new 2021 propane bluebird school bus, 71 passenger with seatbelts. The school had requested seatbelts and it was partially because I had to literally drive through Calgary and leave outside of Calgary onto the highway to go out to where this school is out in the middle of nowhere. So it was for safety. And you know what? And I do have pictures and stuff in there so I can show it. They still were somehow able to put three seatbelts per seat so that it could still have the 71 student capacity, which nobody is using right now because of COVID. 
so the max on the school bus is, you know, 48. <coughs> but it was kind of interesting, you know, because it was the first one I saw with all seatbelts. And I'm like going, <coughs> those seatbelts, you know, to fit the three in there, they're tight. You can tell that it, the aisle's a little bit smaller for them to accommodate. It was a nice bus. But, uh, I had been applying all over. I wanted to try to find, you know, another full-time job. I was not really getting many phone calls back. I only had like three or four over this year. And it was always, nope, nope, nope. One, I went in for an interview and I had a really good shot because I knew all the stuff. I had worked with the person there that was the boss. We had worked together at another company. So I had all the stuff. It just so happened that there was another person that came in after me for an interview and they just had a little bit more stuff knowledge there than what I did in the sales. And so they were a little bit better fit. So I didn't get the job, sad. It happened, but uh, and I had done some other phone interviews and some of the new Skype and video interviews. I've done a whole bunch of those. <clears throat> some of those I I could tell that yeah I didn't do good on some of those. Some of them I thought I did really good, you know, and no and. love it when they say they've gone with somebody else, you know, that's a little bit more qualified or has a little bit more stuff, and I'm like going, I had everything and more than what you wanted. Don't give me that answer. <coughs> <coughs> but, oh well. And most of them you just don't hear back because they're getting bombarded. <coughs> What's really interesting is some places are getting bombarded and overloaded with so many applications that they just never get to your resume. Others, they get nothing. And I'm like going, how in this time of day can you not get any resumes when there's millions without a job right now that are, that would kill for a job? <clears throat> So I had applied and I kept applying. Some I had applied for more than one position with the same company or other ones and it's like, oh well. And I got a phone call. And it was for a bus driving job for one of the schools up north. And I'm like going, do I really want to go from here to up there? Like, is it going to be any better? <coughs> and they were like going, look, you have all the credentials and it's hard for them to find the credentials up north. They don't get as many people up north qualified. You've got your professional license. You've got all your, your training got your first aid and because you worked for the access in the city and you've done the handy bus and you've got the wheelchair and the cue strains which is what they need you have everything that they need and I'm like going okay but I can't get up there for an in-person interview because that's seven and a half hours drive away oh okay you know, hold on, we'll call you back. And they call back, and they're like going, okay, yeah, we're going to do a video interview just to ask and do some of the questions, and see how you do on that. So it was with the human resources and the transportation manager. And I'm going, oh, okay. And, you know, and did that, and they're like going, you know what, we'll give you a call back. And they call back, and they're like going, look, generally, we need to do the whole test and all the stuff on it but we also see all your credentials we see what you do we know what you do 
who are willing to work by that because we need somebody trustworthy and reliable because they've had problems in the past. We want you and we want you to come up to start. And it's like going, okay. It's a little bit different. It's still part-time, but it's a different part-time contract. So, I get benefits. Okay. And there's a pension. Oh, super bonus. This is your pay per day. I'm like going, okay, it's a few dollars more than what I was getting for the route that I was getting here in Calgary. <clears throat> and there's vacation time. Oh, what? And we pay you through summer, spring break, and Christmas. Okay. You know, it's, so it's almost like a full-time, it's not really a full-time, but it's a part-time, but it's not like where you lose so much like you do here, so it's, I'm not going to have to worry, oh my God, how am I going to do Christmas, how am I going to do the summer, how am I going to do the spring bank, I've got no money coming in and try to do the, I, that's all covered. Am I going to be making enough to survive? No. But, the way that it's done, I will be able to get another source of income. <clears throat> Plus, with the SERB changes starting this month, I will be actually qualified to do this job and to get the new uh, plan that's starting at the end of this month. So, I should be okay. But it meant, okay, you start next week. So, the boyfriend went through a quick rush because it was kind of the same thing with him. Where they wanted him up there quick. So I was up there helping him do a quick pack in his car. And then we, mom and I went up there to help clean the, his apartment and pack it so it's ready to be moved. Because he has to be out by the end of next month. So we still have to worry about that. Now I'm going through it. So right now... I got my car packed with what stuff I needed and what I could fit into my car. The rest of my place is not packed. I've got so much that I have to go through and try to decide. But at least my rent's not going to be up or something there because of the parents. So, yeah, I still have to pay for the place. <coughs> but... The one thing up here, up north, is accommodations going to be provided. That's the only way it was going to work. So, I am now on my seven, seven and a half hour drive, starting the next chapter of my life. are still in Calgary. I just had to say goodbye to them. They were kind of like, they knew something was kind of up and they thought, oh, we're going on another trip because we did do a trip. <laughs> no, this time you guys aren't coming. And then also saying goodbye to my family. Because 
now it's going to be a lot less before I see them. That's the hardest part of this whole You know, usually things, you know, better in your time to prepare this year. Nothing's gone to plan, nothing's gone right. You gotta do what you gotta do. So here I am on the way to the next chapter. Sometimes you opportunities present themselves. I always put somebody else's priority first. I always try to help them, you know, to get over <coughs> their shortcomings and you know what, it's going to be alright. Now I'm the one who's going through that where, you know what, I need that support. You just have to do difficult things and a lot of stuff that nobody else will. You gotta take those chances and risks sometimes. And right now, I'm taking another big one. I've taken chances and risks in the past. Some of them have paid off really good. There's a few where I know I made the mistakes. It's, uh, do you learn from those mistakes or not? Or do you keep making them? You know, so this is a whole new big chance. Is this a whole new mistake I'm making? Or is this a whole new, you know, decision move that, you know what, in the end... Alright, it'll be better. I know my family's going to be feeling it because I've always been the go-to person. Everywhere I've gone, I was the go-to person. Whether it's my, whether it's through a job or wherever I was, everybody always looked up to me. No, I'm not running away. I'm still there. But now it's my turn to put myself and other things first. It's going to help everybody. It's going to be difficult. <clears throat> right? As I said, you know, the last few years a lot of things have changed. You know, my sister and my parents are all living together. And you, most of you guys probably know how it is. You know, it's family and stuff like that, given there's going to be squabbles. The original plan was I was supposed to be deciding by March of this year, am I going to move out? And then the parents are going to move in. All those plans changed over the last few years with other events that affected them. <coughs> So those plans were put on hold and changed. But they actually never were. They just came out more in front. Also a little bit more challenging and difficult going. During a pandemic, should you be doing things? Everybody's kind of mixed on that. And I'm like going, you know what? <clears throat> At first it was like, no, we just need to, you know, do what we can and, you know, stay safe. But a lot of people are going, that only lasts for so long. Things didn't get better. Now you have to take those drastic measures. You know, if you don't, 
then you're going to end up like what a lot of people are doing right now. Bankrupt. Lose, you know, losing their place, having to move, try to find another job. I have never seen so many posts for people having to sell their stuff because they have to move. It has increased immensely. And unfortunately, that's what people have to do. I had to make a lot of decisions this year. Right? Hours started going down at work. I couldn't survive. I couldn't pay bills. I had lots of debt. I wasn't going to do a bankruptcy. Yes, there's an, another insolvency, like uh, a debt proposal. So I decided to take that route. And it actually has been a blessing. Because now I just took off one big thing off of my shoulders and worries. Uh, look, this is where one of my cousin lives. Um, yeah. So really, the only debt I have is my car. since they seem to be in a freaking hurry. Oh, and then you slow down. Come on, Maggie. Uh, nice turn signal. Never even used. Um, Maggie, that's the license plate. I think we're going to stop for right now. This is already going on long enough. Coming up in an hour already. Yeah. Um, starting a new life. Don't be afraid. COVID's not going to disappear, guys. We need to learn how to live with it. We've learned how to deal with everything in the past. We've, you know, like the H1N1, the swine flu, the bird flu yada 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 this one has caused so much controversy and stir if they just did things right from the beginning things would be different the damage is done now we gotta pick up the pieces and do what's right have to for our own sanity. Depression is on the rise. Suicide is on the rise. That's not the answer. People need help. The economy needs to reopen. And if they were doing things from the beginning, it would be much easier and a much better situation right now. Wash your hands, guys. Cover your cough and just sneeze into your arm. Wear a mask. I can't say it enough. Stop listening to all the false information and reports. Get the facts. No. Masks do not reduce oxygen. Masks do not make you sick. Ask any real doctor and nurse and stuff because they've been using it for decades. And they'll tell you the truth. None of these fake people that are making up all their own stuff. Right? And you've even got some of them and their own stuff fighting each other. Stop it. Stop it. If everybody just washed their hands, did their due diligence and wore a mask, the economy wouldn't have had to shut down. We wouldn't have had to shut down. 
plain and simple, but because none of them could agree on anything and they all had their own opinion, not facts, opinions, poor information got out. But the buck stops here. The buck stops here. It's scientifically been proven, scientifically been tested. <clears throat> all those ones that are saying it's bad for you or it causes this and all the oxygen ha are just their opinion and they have there's been no scientific proof of that it has been debunked you can say whatever the hell you want I know the truth and the facts the world this year's not over yet. There's more changes happening this year. And the USA, everybody right now is so focused on that because there's also the big election. I'm not even going to get into that because that is a whole other topic. Things need to change down there, let's just say. Someone needs to be replaced. End of story. But, uh, yeah. That's it for uh, this post, and uh, be starting the next chapter. Stay safe and be kind to everyone, please.